Hi there, in this quick video, this I'm actually going to show you how to get the Star Wars Trilogy arcade game working in Supermodel 3 emulator. Um, this is obviously, I guess, well, for me, one of the most popular games on, on this emulator, and I think a lot of people obviously enjoy it as well. I see it mentioned a lot that um, they can't get uh, Star Wars working, or there's issues with, with black screens, and there is two known bugs with it, but they're quite easy to work around. So, what I'll do is show you basically how to do that. So what I've, got screen, you know, what I've got on the screen here is my Supermodel 3 um, folder. So I've got the, the executable in, and I've also got this um, user interface for it. Um, by default, when you download the, the emulator, it's an XC that you, you run from the command line. Uh, but someone's made this user, user interface for it, um, which is quite handy. It's a lot easier to, to use and launch games. Um, so um, what I can do is, is make this available to download. Um, uh, I'll put a link in the description. Obviously, the ROMs I can't. Uh, but all, you, all you need to really is, is download it, extract it into a folder like this, uh, and then basically place all your ROMs as zip files in here. Uh, and then when you run this file here, UI.exe, you get this interface. Uh, and it lists all the games here that it finds. Uh, and obviously, you, you might need to initially point at your ROMs folder. So you click here and just basically select your, your folder. Uh, it contains all your ROMs. Um, so, like I say, yeah, here's all the ROMs it, it's found, and then so we've got Star Wars Trilogy sort of highlighted, and it's got the little clip here. Um, and now, once we're in here, we can change all the different settings and tell it what what size window to run, or whether to run full screen or widescreen, all that kind of stuff. Um, some some of the settings will differ per game. Uh, things like the the frequency of the actual process itself. Some you may need to crank up slightly if it's running a bit slow. Other games you may need to bring down. The default is is here, just limit it just under fifty percent. Um, but you can kind of play around with that. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other options here around sort of the rendering and multi-threaded bits and pieces. Um, V-Sync I've turned off on mine because it it slowed it down quite a bit. Um, so the video or the you know the, the gameplay is a little bit you, know, you get the, cut, the, the the cutting slightly in the scene, which V-Sync helps eliminate, but. Um, I mean, your system might be fine, so put that on if you can. If it is a bit slow, turn that off. And then you've got options in here for sound um, and the controls as well, whether it's direct input or X input or raw input. Um, I'm using a, an Xbox One controller, so I've got direct input. Um, but you can pick whatever happens, what is best for you. Some of the games were, were multi cap, so you could emulate the network. And if you want to try and do multiplayer, I haven't played with a hat to be honest, but you can try doing that if you playing sort of two player um, but yeah anyway so the reason for the video was with Star Wars arcade okay so there's two issues with it um, I'll try and demonstrate them and then show how to fix them um, so there's one issue which is a bit minor I guess is that if you play the game and you do you hit the button to insert credits and you're playing and then when you finish you just close you, um, and you've still got credits left you'll find the next time you start the game it will go straight to the mission select screen it won't come up with the intro screen where you know, you've got Darth Vader, um, it'll go straight to the select screen, which I guess isn't a big issue, but if you want to get rid of that, you, know, you can make sure you don't exit with, with um, credits. Um, and then the other thing is, it's a bit of a weird bug, but if you start the game and actually um, insert credits and hit the start button before the first 3D theme is rendered, uh, I think which in this case is where you've got Darth Vader on screen, um, if you do it before that and then you play the game, when you get to the mission select screen, and hit select, um, you'll then just get the black screen. I think that's the black screen that a lot of people um, have the issue with. Um, so, um, yeah, I'll basically show you how to fix that. So, if I launch the game, it should open in a window for me. Which is not doing, it's because I clicked on the wrong folder and didn't select anything, so it's cleared it. Uh, so let me quickly stick that back in. Uh, there you go, rookie mistake. So let me just find it again <coughs> where all my games are. Um, I've got them all within Launchbox so I can organize them. I should turn a light in the actual emulators folder. Mm. 
Tiger Model 3 ROMs. Right, try this again. Right, so you see there it went straight to mission select, did the intro, so obviously I've exited um, with uh, coins or credits still. So if I now click on the first one, the first mission, all seems to be going okay. It's a little bit slow because I'm recording at the same time, so it normally runs fine. So this is where you get the black screen. Um, I'm not capturing at the moment, but you, you, I can hear the sound. I can hear the sound of the game, or at least some Star Wars music. But nothing's happening. Nothing's loading, and then it'll sit there for forevermore. I think occasionally it does actually crash. But that's that's basically the bug. So what you need to do to fix it is in your Model Three folder, you've got the MV RAM folder, uh, and this is the non-volatile RAM um, that was in the arcade cabinets. So it's basically settings, etc that don't get lost when the power's cut. So it's all the kind of stuff. This is how it knows if it's exited with credits still left. Um, so what you can actually do is delete the MV uh, folder for Star Wars Trilogy. The, the um, .mv file will match the name of the of the um, uh, the ROM. So yeah, delete that out and that basically resets it. So now when we launch it again, it should launch cleanly and then because we reset it what you quite can get with the um, with this is it waits for the especially the hardware or the original cabinet so if you hit six on your keyboard you'll go into the test menu and then you use the button five to go down the different, um, different options so we go down to game assignments and hit six to select and so we've got feedback lever so we num press number five till we get to feedback lever. Number six to change it. Number five to back down. Number six to select. So now it will no longer ask prompt for that message at the beginning, but it's waiting for the feedback lever. While we're in here as well, to get around the other issue around inserting coins and credits too early, is hit, F hit sorry hit number five again to scroll down the list. We we'll go to coin assignments. Hit six. And this is where you can set, you know, if you've got this, or well, you had the physical arcade machine in your in your arcade, you could basically decide how many coins the credit was. So we'll go to this one here and hit button six. And it's something like option 20, 27, free play. So basically, we've now put it in free play mode, so you don't get any, you know, if this was a physical machine, no coins, no credits, you just play. So we'll do number five to go down to exit, and then we'll press number six button, and then press number five button to go down the list, hit number six, exit test mode, and now it's going to exit out, start the game in free play mode. So you see now, because we haven't started with credits in, we now get the proper intro screen. We're not, we're not going straight to mission select. So we see now free play. And this is what I saw about the first 3D screen that it asked for. Um, that comes up and if you put credit if you put credits in and press start before this, that's when you get into that loop of of the black screen. But we should be okay now because we've we don't have to put any coins in, we can just hit hit a button on the control to start. And now, if we go to the Death Star, we'll get the same intro screen. And fingers crossed. See, now we're actually getting the videos, whereas before I had the same music, but none of this was actually working. And the video does play in the top section of the screen for some reason. I think that's that's always the case. Like I say, it's going quite slow here, but I think that's because I'm recording at the same time. It normally plays absolutely fine, so. Just let it catch up and actually load the mission so you can see that it works.
there we go, we're in. Let's shoot your own ship. So yeah, so as you can see this is playing okay, albeit slow. And I'm just using the mouse to play around. If, if this actually works quite well with the light gun. So anyway, yeah, that's it. Uh, I can now exit out. And now it's important, now we've got that, now it's regenerated right, the MVRAM setting file. So that's a setting that now can, tells it that it's in free play mode um, and tells it that the feedback lever is turned off. So what I normally do is just do control C, control V, take a copy. So I know that this one is a working copy. So if I ever get in that situation again where it's, it's a black screen or it's exited with um, with the credits in and I'm going straight to the mission select all I can do is take the one that's there because I know it's, it's now basically balked I can delete that I'll take a copy of this one and just rename it back oh, in that I meant to do this just rename it back and that's working again so I don't need to go back in go into the test menu set it to free play turn off the lever all that kind of stuff I can just Recall that file. Um, I did something similar to this, but using it within it was using the Model 3 emulator within Coinops, the Coinops build because uh, they're slightly different. They, they launch with a little script, so all I did on, on there was um, add a little couple of lines into their script, which basically did this it deleted the current .mv file and copied this one in its place. So I knew that each time I started it, it was going to work. So, yeah, that's that's how to get Star Wars Trilogy working on your Sega Model 3 emulator. Um, I hope that makes sense. Any questions, let me know. Um, please like the video, please subscribe. I'm trying to sort of build up the channel, um, do a whole bunch of retro gaming videos coming, but also just general tech stuff like PC, hints and tips, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, please subscribe. Um, I've started a, a Facebook group as well to go along with the, uh, go along with the channel just because I think it's a, an easier format to, to chat in and ask questions, but you know, comment about videos or ask for new ones or, or anything tech related, really. So, yeah, feel free to pop along. Like I say, please subscribe if you like the channel. I'm going to do a whole, whole lot more of this. And what I'll do is zip this lot up, um, obviously minus the ROMs, um, and I'll share it out and put the link into my, uh, into the description. So you can basically grab, grab this version and grab the, the UI as well. Just remember, it's a little bit hard to find. There's a lot of bogus links and sort of links that go to dodgy sites. Um, so you're never quite sure with getting the genuine version but this this one works really well for me so yeah i'll zip it up and, uh, and add it for you guys so yeah hope you enjoyed it hope it was useful sort of short and sh short and sharp um but yeah like i say star wars really is like a, a pretty cool game so it's worth doing and i think actually just to note the the sega rally 2 game i think it's Sega Rally 2 is affected by the uh the same issue as the, the you know the one around exiting with um with credits left in, so you can do the same fix for that. You can delete the MV file and basically recreate it. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Hopefully that was helpful, and uh, hopefully catch you on the next video. Cheers, mate.